Hey guys, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time on the channel, my name is Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we're going to be talking about what the heck is going on with the Glock 19X. Uh, we're going to do a really quick overview of this pistol and then we're going to do a bit of a comparison with the SIG P320 M17. If you've been living underneath a rock, you may not know that the Glock 19X ended up losing the MHS program contract to the SIG P320. And we're gonna get into a little bit of the con controversy with that, but also some of the controversy when Glock released this pistol to the civilian market. We'll talk about that as well. Before we get into the video though, I wanna take a quick second to talk to you guys about this channel sponsor, and that's gonna be Coffee Brand Coffee Company. I know it sounds like a lame <laughs> name for a coffee company, but, if you guys are interested in finding a really good company that does coffees, teas, hot cocoa without any type of political influence, Coffee Brand Coffee Company is going to be the one for you. I know that there has been a lot of controversy with other coffee companies out there, regardless if that's Starbucks or Black Rifle Coffee Company or whatever the case may be. If you're just tired of all of that and you just want a company to make good coffee for you and that's all they care about, you guys might check out Coffee Brand Coffee Company and see if it's right for you. I'll have a link to them in the pinned comment down below. Uh, naturally, you guys know how I do things. I'll let you guys know I am an affiliate with them. So if you do buy something from Coffee Brand Coffee Company, I'll get a small kickback. It's a good way to support the channel and I would appreciate it. If that's not right for you and you want to stick with the brand that you normally use, you do that. I appreciate it either way. In addition to that, if you haven't already signed up for the Fit and Fire newsletter, swing on by fitandfire.com and check that out. Uh, I do a giveaway. I get deals for ammo and firearms, firearms accessories for you guys each and every single week. Not to mention, every month I update training across the country from some really great instructors. So. Swing on by, check that out, and I would appreciate it as well. Okay, so let's get into it. The Glock 19X was Glock submission into the M17 MHS program, and they lost. <laughs> Realistically, SIG won the contract, but I believe that Glock won the trials. We'll talk about that here in just a second. What is the Glock 19X, if you don't know? Real quick overview. Basically, this is going to be a Gen 5 version of the Glock 19 slide with a Glock 17 frame. Pretty much everything going on with it is going to be consistent with what you see with the Gen 5 Glocks today. However, they wanted to get a pistol that you didn't have to worry about the size of your hand uh, to grip, especially for the military, because obviously you've got people of all sizes and shapes. Uh, they wanted to make sure that they were going to be able to grip this pistol, no problem. Uh, I was kind of curious when they rolled this out to the civilian market, why they would do that, because for the civilian market, it's kind of in reverse of what most people want. Most people want a longer slide and a shorter frame. Glock went the opposite direction, but realistically all that was was Glock trying to make up the cost for all of the R&D into this pistol since they did end up losing the contract. Now, what do you get with this pistol? Well, you're going to get two 19 round magazines with a standard Glock 17 magazine. Uh, so you're going to either get 17 or 19 rounds uh, with the plus two base plates here. Uh, one of the things that a lot of people didn't like was the fact that this lip right here prevents you from utilizing the Glock 17 mags, and that's actually false. This lip does prevent you from utilizing the Glock 17 Gen 5 mags, but if you have the old style Gen 4 or older magazines, uh, then you should have no problems. They will fit and work just fine. Now this particular magazine is a hex mag. Uh, I've got a review on it if you guys are interested in that, but uh, this particular magazine is based off of the Gen 3 mags uh, with their own little take to it. So um, definitely check those out if you're interested, but they do fit and they do work. So uh, anybody saying that this is um, not capable of utilizing standard Glock 17 mags, it's not necessarily correct. So, 
With that being said, you're getting pretty much all of the features that you would expect from a standard Glock pistol, uh, especially from the Gen 5 uh, texturing on, on the pistol grip, your standard Glock grip angle, uh, which I've come accustomed to. I can shoot Glocks very well. You're gonna get an ambi um, slide release, slide stop, slide catch, whatever you wanna call it. Nobody cares. But you're, you're gonna get an ambi slide release there and then your magazine release naturally is going to be reversible should you wanna do that. And then it's gonna have this really nice coating on the slide as well. Now the downside is this coating makes the slide really slick. So if your hands are wet from sweat or uh, you know, whatever the case may be, it might slide a little bit, but naturally you have some really good uh, serrations in the back that you can uh, actuate the slide that way. It's going to have their marksman barrel, which is going to have a really nice crown and then polygonal, I think is the word, polygonal um, rifling in the barrel. And I can tell you that uh, this upgraded Gen 5 barrel that they have in here is pretty dang accurate. Uh, at 50 yards, I was able to run, um, what, 13 out of 15 rounds on target. Maybe it was 12, 12 or 13 rounds of 15 on target with this pistol and uh, was pleasantly surprised. Once I figured out how it was shooting, where it was hitting, I was very happy with the accuracy of it. The other thing about this pistol is it's going to come with steel tritium field night sights. And that leaves me scratching my head because you know Glock has the worst sights on their standard pistols. Uh, their, their polymer and the, the, the way that they've set those sights up don't work with me at all uh, but with this pistol they have three dot night sights and there's really no increase in cost really at all uh, this pistol is going to come in right around that 600 to 650 dollar mark i bought this one closer to the 600 dollar mark uh, just a few months ago and um yeah it's been uh, it's been great. It's been a great pistol. Now, is this a pistol that I would carry? For me, no, probably not, because the longer frame uh, means that I'm going to have to fight concealment and make sure that I'm always adjusting or something like that. It just doesn't work for me. However, there are a lot of people who have been carrying this pistol um, and have really enjoyed it. I've seen a lot of pictures online of people who have modded this out with, uh, you know, the X300 light, and they've cut it for an RMR, and uh, they've done some, uh, you know, some Cerakoting stuff done with this and everything, and it, it really looks cool, but realistically for me, it doesn't necessarily fit. I'll stick with my Glock 19 MOS and uh, be just fine with that. Now, let's talk about some of the issues between this pistol in the P320 M17. Naturally, this is the pistol that ended up winning the contract from the US military and ended up walking away with $580 million in that contract. Glock was fighting uh, tooth and nail to understand why they ended up losing the contract between these two pistols. And realistically, the uh, Government Accountability Office, or GAO, said that the P320 ended up coming in $1.2 million cheaper than the Glock 19X. So how could that be? Well, one of the reasons was SIG knew that if they could undercut even themselves as far as the cost goes, that uh, they would have plenty of civilian sales because the military picked this uh, pistol up. They knew that they were going to be able to market this to other law enforcement agencies or other militaries around the world. So they were going to make up their money down the road. So by undercutting themselves and basically coming in at a loss for this pistol, they were going to be able to win in the long run. With that being said, Glock did file a petition with GAO and that's the uh, response that they ended up getting. Now the other controversy behind this is the MHS 
trials was supposed to be in two phases. The first phase was going to be the, you know, five different pistols that were submitted for the program and the two pistols that were downvoted or the ones that were the best of the five would then go into phase two for a 22,500 round torture test. That's where I think that Glock would have really walked away with uh, the contract because we all know Glocks are extremely reliable. Not to say that the P320 isn't reliable, but I will say that uh, my buddy Chris with Thonis Outlaw, oh he has not well, had some good experiences say, with his P320s. I think, think he has said that, 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 that all of his have had some type of uh, failure to feed or failure to extract uh, issues, but that's his experience. It hasn't been my experience, so uh, take that for what you will. However, I do believe that this would have failed in the long run. One of the other reasons that Glock ended up losing this is that the request for the M17 was a modular handgun system. So they wanted something that was going to be extremely easy to change out the internal components from a polymer frame to a new polymer frame and SIG's design of their trigger pack was going to allow them to do that extremely quickly. You can't really do that with a Glock. Yeah, you can take out these pins and pull all the internals out, but it's not captive like it is with the P320. So that was another condition as to why it could have lost the contract according to GAO. So take that as you will. Honestly, I believe that it was probably some under the table shenanigans going on between the military and SIG because lo and behold, Guess who won the new contract for the squad automatic weapon? Big surprise. Sig won that one too. Now, realistically, the other the <laughs> the other uh, submissions were pretty awful, but uh, still kind of has a lot of people scratching their head. Now, the question is, of these two pistols, which one would I take? And um, man, I tell you, that's a tough decision. On the one hand, I'm extremely experienced with Glock pistols. I've shot thousands of rounds through this, whether it, it be a Gen 4 19, a Gen 5 MOS, uh, this pistol, a Gen 7, or a Glock 17 rather, uh, I've shot tons and tons of rounds through these and I'm accustomed to it, I understand it, I know it, and I know what to expect with a Glock. With the P320, um, I haven't shot as many rounds and I can tell you that I'm not as accurate with this pistol as I am with the Glock. Could that be experience? Yeah, sure. But one of the things that I really don't like about the P320 is going to be the trigger. The trigger is one of the most underwhelming triggers that you'll ever see. I've got a review on this if you guys want to check it out, but uh, this thing, it just kind of creeps and creeps and then when it, when it finally breaks it's just kind of it just kind of it not not really anything going for it the reset is pretty long it actually kind of feels like it's pushing your finger forward and then here's your break again it's just kind of right whereas a glock you know what you're getting with that trigger it's the exact same trigger that they've had in most of their uh, pistols. This one has been somewhat upgraded for the Gen 5 versions, but you're going to get a pretty solid wall. There will be a little bit of creep, maybe a millimeter or two. There's your break. Here's your reset. Short, loud, tactile, and there's your break again. I know what I'm getting with this trigger each and every single time. Now, one of the biggest advantages that the P320 has is the fact that it is it does come optics ready, and I do really like that aspect of it. That's not to say that you couldn't just pick up a Glock 45 MOS. It's basically the same pistol. Maybe you just want it in Coyote Brown. I, I don't know. <laughs> if you really wanted the MHS submission, then obviously you're going to have to go with this, and you're going to have to mill the slide for it to be a red dot capable pistol, whereas the M17, M18 comes optics ready from the manufacturer. So take that as you will. Maybe that's not that big of a thing for you. Maybe you don't like red dots on pistols. If that's the case, then obviously the Glock 19, I think is going to be the clear winner. But 
That's not to say that Glock didn't walk away with some money. A lot of people don't know this, that even though they missed out on the $580 million contract for the government, they still ended up with a $15 million contract to supply uh, parts and magazines for the Glocks that were already in service for special operations and some of the other alphabet agencies out there utilizing uh, the Glock. So uh, there is that aspect of it as well. You can take that or leave it. Either way, it doesn't matter to me, but I wanna hear what you guys have to say. Sound off in the comment section down below. Did the military get it right? Did they pick the correct pistol in the MHS program or did they just go with the cheaper option? How did that work out for them? Sound off in the comment section down below. I would really appreciate it. And again, I wanna say thank you to Coffee Brand Coffee Company for supporting the channel and uh, allowing me to be an affiliate with them. If you guys are interested, like I said, only if you're interested, check them out. I would really appreciate it. I've already had some of their coffee and have really enjoyed it. So if you're a connoisseur, check them out, see what you guys think, I would appreciate it. That's gonna cover it for this edition. Again, I really do appreciate you guys. As always, freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. We'll catch you guys later. Bye, y'all.